Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. As we continue our study in uh, Psalm 46. I've been in this couple of days, and uh, just a real quick, you know, it's a uh, God is there first in times of trouble and times of calamity in our life. And I'm just going to refer back up to verse 1 there. It says, God is our refuge. You know, that's a, a shelter for us. And it's also a strength. He gives us the courage and the strength, a very present help in trouble. And that kind of sets the stage for this whole psalm. And so as we just look at he, how he worked in our lives as he goes through this psalm, and we get down now, we're down to verses 8 through 11 to close out. He says, verse number 8, he says, Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. Let's read through the rest of that. He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear in asunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And that's the, it kind of closes out that psalm. So what he's talking about, this is talking about the end times now. It's kind of a prophecy as we look toward the, the millennial reign. And at uh, verse 8, he says, Come behold the works of the Lord. Uh, the idea of behold there is not just to, to look at it casually, but it's to kind of um, perceive like a prophet would, or maybe you might use the term uh, discernment. Uh, as you look at what God is doing and what desolation he's made in the earth, how he's uh, judged the earth. See, God judges nations now. And, uh, you know, there's a day coming for you and I as believers that will stand before the beam of seat of Christ and will be judged, but uh, and not for our sin, but for our works. In the same way, he judges nations. And he lifts up nations, he brings down nations. And it's kind of uh, different, I guess you would, as you look at the history, and we see that God, he'll lift up a nation, and then he'll judge that nation. And I'm talking about the pagan nations, that he'll use them uh, against uh, the Assyrians, he used against the northern tribes, and uh, we know that he ends up using the Babylon against the Judah. But he also then judges them. So God God protects his people. He uses judgment of others to, to affect them and get them where he wants them to be. But uh, as he works in their in the lives, he finally brings judgment on the nations. And that's what we're seeing here. And he says, uh, look, look what he's done. Um, and then go to verse 9. He says, he maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, cutteth the spear in, in sunder, and burneth the chariots in fire. And those are all things that we would look at and think about war and conflict. And uh, this is the day of coming. We know we celebrate Christmas time. I mean, we pray for, uh, you know, they talk about peace on earth, goodwill to man. That's not going to happen uh, this side of the millennium. Until Christ returns, there'll be no peace on earth, lasting peace. There might be like the nations can have some peace from time to time. But as far as the world's concerned, there's not going to be any peace on earth until Christ returns. Uh, we sing that that song at Christmas time all the time, you know, joy to the world. Well, that's not actually about the birth of Christ. That's actually about the second coming of Christ. You know, a joy to the world. The Lord has come. Uh, the Lord is coming in, in Revelation 19. And that's when he comes. And that's when there will truly be peace on earth. And so that's what he does here in, in verse 9. It says he takes away all the, he judges the nations. It takes away all those tools of war. So then they, they, uh, when Christ returns, he'll be ushering in that time of peace, that thousand year reign. So we want to see how, he, how God works and, and what he does, you know, as we look at the world around us today. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, that the end is close. Uh, some even claim it's the tribulation. Well, it's sure not the tribulation. Uh, not as we understand what the scripture says about tribulation, because in tribulation there's going to be worldwide devastation. And we can see as we go through the seals and so forth, uh, the trumpets and the bowls, you see how it gets uh, increasingly more violent. Uh, and goes from affecting the people, and then goes all the way to affecting the earth. And God brings judgment on on all of it. And uh, when we see finally we get to that time of peace, you know, and we talk about that all the time. We're looking to the rapture to take the church out of here, but also we're looking for that uh, more so for the return of Christ when He comes in His glory and sets up His kingdom. Then all these things will be put behind us. There won't be no more sorrow and trouble and all these things that we see today. It's all going to be behind us. We we'll go through that millennial reign. Uh, the people living in that millennial reign, living in a physical body like we have today, a corruptible body. But you and I, we won't have to worry about that. We'll be in our glorified body, and we'll go through that thousand-year reign with him, and then, of course, on into the new Jerusalem and, and a new eternity, our new earth and that. So, so that's what we're looking at here. And so uh, the nation of Israel, as they look at the victory, 
uh, in this day and time, back in this uh, in the Old Testament, you know, they were in, in their land, they had the promised land, but there's a lot of conflict, a lot of things going on all the time, and as we read about things that was going on during David's time, as they approached all the way to the age of the kings. So we see God in control, though. We know he's always in control. We can trust him. And that's what we look at here. And it goes a little bit further here. Verse 10 says, And be still, and that has the idea to relax, cease from your conflict, cease from your wars, cease, be still, and know that I am God. And so uh, how can we know that he's a God? Well, we see the idea of know there is to, to ascertain by seeing, actually seeing God at work. And, you know, uh, how do we know God answers prayer? Well, we see him answer prayer. And when we, we pray and he responds to our prayers, sometimes he says what we want to, sometimes he doesn't. But when he always responds to us, and so by experience, we know God. And that's what he's telling us. He judged these nations. He said, just look, look what I have done. Look what is going on. And know that I am God, the, the big G. There all, all these other gods we read about is a little G. But uh, he's the only true God. And his, it's his hand at work. So all these other nations that worship other gods, lift up other idols, adultery, uh, they, they get judged. And, you know, we can kind of look at how God dealt with those other nations. And because of their worship of idols and so forth, uh, when Israel or when you and I uh, get involved in that, when our nation gets involved in idolatry, you know, God has favored our nation. We are not his chosen people, but he surely favored America. And, and so as we turn more and more against him, we turn more and more in rebellion against him, we're going to see as he uh, kind of pulls his hand away from us. And eventually, I, I believe, it would, the nation will fall. It has to. And so that's going to, going to happen. Uh, we pray that it happens after the rapture, but we don't know when it's going to happen. But we know God's in control. And, and the thing about it is we look at all the things going on, we know that we can trust him. And when we fail, he's faithful. When we look at what's going on around us and we see what we've done, how we've responded to him. And, and uh, as, a, as a nation, again, we are a favored nation, but look how we responded to God. We started all through the, you know, the 1700s, we get into the 1800s, we see the Civil War, but, but God has always maintained this nation and, and blessed us. But now we're getting into the point where we don't want God anymore. We've got into a, a mode of leadership in the last uh, couple, 20, 30 years that uh, there's a rebellion against God. And so we need to uh, understand our responsibility as Christians. So we need to stay faithful, right? We're going to stay faithful, keep upbeat in the, in the fact that we know that God's in control. And he said, be still, no, I will be exalted among the heathen. I'm going to be lifted up. I will be exalted in the earth. So he's telling us what's going to happen in that in the future. And then we see, we'll close out here in verse number 11. He said, the Lord of hosts is with us. And we know as, uh, in this day and age, in this uh, under the new covenant, we know that we're indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. And so, therefore, we have God with us. And again, it goes back to that, that refuge. He said, Jacob is our refuge, uh, Selah. Now, that idea here isn't the same. Up in uh, verse one, number one, it was a different uh, refuge. There was a shelter, a place to protect us. And now it's a high place called a high place. And so, but we see God always in control. And so, when the challenges come to life, we know where we can go. As a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you don't have that place to run to. Uh, you can. If you just repent, you turn to God and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin. Through faith and trust in the, the work that Christ did on Calvary, the shedding of his precious blood. When we put that and by faith believe that, then we have forgiveness of sin. And we know then from that point on, no matter what happens in our life to this old physical body, to be absent from this body, we'll be present with the Lord. So do that today. Don't put it off. Uh, people want to put things off. You know, I say, well, I got plenty of time. I'm young. That, that don't mean anything. I just read here uh, this morning where there was a prom. A uh, young girl went to her prom. After the prom, they had a party. She got shot and killed. So you just don't know what's going to happen, especially in the world we live in today. But we know God's in control. And as a Christian, we know no matter what happens here, we have a better place waiting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you again for your love. And we thank you for what you do for us day by day. And we just pray that we would be found faithful to respond to you in a way that would be a blessing to you, Lord. And for those that don't know Christ, we lift them up today, Lord, as you might bring someone into their life. If they've heard the gospel, we pray that you would bring bring it back to their memories through the power of your spirit, and they would be under conviction. They would repent and trust Jesus. We thank you for what you've done, looking to the future, and thanking you for what you're going to do. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen.